Hey guys, my name is Shai. Welcome to another pick a card reading. This one is focusing on where you are now versus where you're going to be in the future. Kind of like I'll probably put in the thumbnail now you versus future you. This is really timeless. This is for whenever you're watching it. I'm not even going to put a timeline projection in here. I mean, this could be who you're going to be in a year, in 10 years, in 10 minutes. I don't know. Honestly, I feel like the timelines are in so much flux right now that it really is up to you how quickly you navigate through these energies. So we're just going to say you now versus what kind of journey you're going through and where you're going to end up, who you're going to become, what kind of energy you're going to be sitting in at some point further down your path. So go ahead and pick your pile. It's one, two, three, and number four. Hey, pile one, welcome to your reading. You guys have been working really hard on something. I feel like you've given your whole heart to it. Like you have been a fixed point. Look at this spirit of swords. This panther coming out of the bushes. He's been hunting. He's been fixating on something. He's been putting all of his effort into accomplishing his goal. A fixed point this sword and it comes along with three of pentacles all of these ants doing all of this hard work look at the burden they are carrying up this hill this has been you guys this is the paradigm you've been in just so much hard work focused on climbing to the top of the mountain i don't know what you've been working on it's going to be different for everybody it could, this could be a relationship it could be your career it could be your studies at school it could be something a lot more nebulous, like some kind of aspect of your personality. Whatever you have been fixating on trying to accomplish, you know, th this naked heart card, this is really, this is a very powerful card. This is, this deck is called the naked heart. And it, in the major arcana, it goes all the way up to the world card. And then after the world card is the naked heart. What does that tell you? This card is, it's almost like the higher octave of the fool, also like the higher octave of the world card. It's like when you go past the whole world, past the whole universe, what are you left with? What do you have? You have the naked heart. You have the frequency of your soul. You have your own purity, your own authenticity. That's all that there is. It's as if you are the universe. And I feel like two things going on with this card. First of all, it is just a representation of how much of yourself you've been putting into this goal. And it is also a representation that you are about to, or what you have been doing, you have been reaching the end of this cycle of struggle and focus, and you are leveling up out of that octave, out of that theme, out of that paradigm. And this is going, this transition you're going through right now, it's going to be difficult. You know, I almost wanted to say traumatic, but that's probably a little bit dramatic because I don't mean trauma as in things are going to happen to you and you're going to be traumatized. I just mean you're going to have a certain amount of struggle letting things go and letting things go can be the, <laughs> one of the hardest things humans ever do. Just think about people trying to leave relationships, pe people trying to leave jobs, people trying to move, uh, people trying to get out of religions or just past thought patterns, whatever it is. It can even be, you know, imagine you're really into some kind of fandom, some, some fan thing, and you just, you pitch your camp and you're going to fight for that, uh, for that fandom as hard as you can. We, we don't like to leave things behind. Once we, what, there's a fallacy, isn't there? What is it called? Of course, now I can't remember it. You know, it's like once once we're really invested in something, if we've spent a lot of money or a lot of time or a lot of energy into something, we don't want to leave it behind because we're invested. So there's something you guys are, have been investing in for a long time, maybe even most of your lives, maybe many lives. And you have to, you're starting to realize that it doesn't matter how hard you try. It doesn't matter how hard you are struggling like these ants. You have to... This is somehow, it's just not for you. <laughs> it's not for you. Look at this. Not for you. There's a fortune cookie here. 
in the middle of this chessboard that is poignant. It's simply that this thing you've been trying to acquire or accomplish or achieve just isn't part of your destiny for this life. It's just, it's not for you. Maybe it's for somebody else. Maybe it's for you at some other time, but it is not for you right now. And you don't need me to tell you that you are already starting to know that deep down, deep down in your naked heart, you are starting to realize that it's got to go. You got to move on. You got to make your peace with it. You just have to get okay with understanding that you can't have this right now. But both with this naked heart card and this not for you card, the message is, well, it's not for you and that might suck, but this is really for your greatest good. That is what you have to understand here. This is all for your best of benefit. You might think you need to get that job or be with that person or live in that country or just accomplish, make a certain amount of money, whatever you think you need to accomplish. You might think that that is your key to happiness and peace and joy and success, but it's not really. That is one way for somebody else, maybe, but it is not the way for you right now. There is going to be a better way for you to live your life. There is another way for you to be happy and peaceful and successful. You can, you're still going to get the essence of what you want out of your life. It's just going to look different than what you thought it is. You need to tune into your, tune into your higher self, your subconscious, your, your inner guidance, whatever your inner guidance is for you, tune into that and you will be led to your better version, to your, to your better version of your life because your future you, I mean, you got the four of swords here. So there's going to be a period of rest and recovery and recuperation. You this you guys I feel like you're pretty ambitious and you're pretty much like go-getters, so you might not like this four of swords energy. I think this is like a dog or maybe a cat. It's hard to tell even looking at the card in real life, it's very dark. Um this is some kind of animal curled up sleeping, hibernating. You might not like that experience. You might not like that energy, but just know that it's kind of imagine you're going through surgery or you're getting ready to go to physiotherapy. You, you know, just imagine anything when your body needs to rest and recover. Well, the rest of you needs to rest and recover as well. Your emotional body, you know, your mind, your spiritual body, your subtle bodies, all of that needs to go through a recovery phase, a rest phase. But this is what is going to be coming for you. This look, look at these beautiful fishes, <laughs> fishes. <laughs> look at the fishies. They are beautiful and blue and swimming in a circle and they are corralling up all of these pentacles. Then six of pentacles as a, always an element of soul family and comfort and homecoming. So I see you coming into what you wanted especially if it involves a place or people. This is a coming together of people in harmony in and in blessedness and in abundance. And especially your final card here, um, and this is kind of the closest thing this spread here has to an ultimate trajectory, is the Ace of Pentacles. A whole new beginning. Look at this guy with the pentacles and his antlers. He is holding all of the potential of all of the new things. This is your new door opening. This is your new portal. This is what you can step into. You just need to remember that whatever these poor ants, these poor ants, I feel so bad for them. Whatever they have been trying to accomplish, it's not for you right now. It's not for you. So Part of this transition you guys are making isn't just letting go of this thing or this person or this energy. You also are going to have to let go of this. You have to stop being like these ants. You have to stop trying so hard. You have to stop being so ambitious. So I feel like you guys have been in this pocket of energy of ambition and struggle and accomplishment and rising to the, like climbing to the top of the mountain, really like Capricorn energy. These ants are climbing up like Capricorns, you know, but those are all good things, but they have a time in their place. And the problem with them is that they sort of celebrate suffering. They certainly celebrate struggling and they 
keep you in a cycle of having to suffer and having to struggle in order to receive what you deserve. If you can kind of, so part of, part of this leaving behind, part of this not for you is stepping out of that paradigm. You can be moving into a state of, yeah, rest and flow and circularity and reciprocity, and then you will receive everything that is coming to you. So just keep that in mind when you feel yourself spinning around in those gotta do, gotta do, gotta work, gotta struggle, gotta suffer, gotta try, gotta accomplish, gotta succeed, gotta win. That energy, you gotta leave that behind. You wanna move into, you wanna be like these fish. Flowing, reciprocal, circular, watery. And that is how you will receive your new beginning with all of your abundance and everything that you have been trying to achieve. But it's going to flow to you much, much more easily, much, much more naturally. You will no longer have to carry your house on your back up a mountain to get it. And I think that's what I'm seeing for you guys. <laughs> Good luck on your journey, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. Hope to see you again soon. Okay, pile two, welcome to your reading. I feel like you guys are on a precipice, kind of in a good way, certainly not in, in a bad way, but, you know, standing on a precipice is always a little bit nerve wracking, but I feel like you guys have already come a really long way. You've got Ace of Worlds. This would be the Ace of Pentacles. The subtext up here is success. As you can see, all of these planets, everything has been coming together. This is almost like a you've all already leveled up once. It's like you've already been able to select your new direction and you've already achieved a certain level of success with it. Because uh, right here is the Woman of Worlds, which would be the Queen of Pentacles. Preserver. You guys went from ace to queen really quickly, almost like somebody who moved into a new, <laughs> somebody who moved into a new house and fixed it all up really fast and then planted a garden and painted and decorated and furnished everything and turned this kind of rundown old home into a beautiful a beautiful home, a beautiful work of art, just lush and luxurious and everything all... The only word I can really think of is home. You turned an old shack into a home and you are the queen of the house. This, I'm not saying that most of you literally just did that, but you know it's that kind of energy. You recently started something, you took on some kind of challenge and you terraformed it with your own energy, with your own essence, and now you are kind of the ruling queen. <laughs> like, so you guys have already been through a lot uh, recently, and now you're sitting with this two of crystals, well, this would be the two of swords, with your equanimity. So I feel like you guys are pretty good where you're at, yeah, you are you are sitting in your equanimity. You have maintained the balance. Two of crystals, this is the two of swords. This is clearly a departure from the, the traditional interpretation of two of swords, which is having to make a decision or feeling um, like you have a blindfold on and that you can't find your way forward. I Because with this word equanimity here and just looking at this imagery, you guys are feeling pretty good about where you're at. I think the problem might be that you you feel pretty good, so you want to sit in on your plateau. You are going, okay, I've been through all of that. Can't I just enjoy this for a little bit? I just want to sit and enjoy. The universe is like, nah, you got more, more coming your way. Regeneration regeneration so everything you've recently been through that was just the start that was just your beginning shit is about to keep cycling through if you already terraformed one old shack one old landscape that was sort of the tutorial it it's like imagine you were playing a video game and 
you got to the end of the game and you're like, wow, that was such a good game. Uh, it was really awesome. It was pretty challenging, you know, but I rose to the occasion and I beat it and I developed all these skills and it was good. And then you realize that wasn't the game at all. That was only the tutorial. It'd be like reading a book and finishing the book and then realizing that was only the first chapter. So there is so much more for you guys to come and everything you've been through has only been, yeah, learning. Kind of that idea of, you know, when you graduate high school, you think you know everything and you think you've done everything there is to do in the world. And now you're set and you're just ready to live out the rest of your life without any problems. And then, of course, you know, your 20s happen and your 20s is nothing but struggle and learning and suffering and figuring out how much you don't actually know. It's kind of like that. It's like you guys had your first level of graduation, but man, there's so much more to come. I keep feeling like a precipice. You guys are on a precipice. I'm really feeling that I'm getting this image. And it is reminding me a lot of there's this song by a German band, uh, a German band called Neubauten. And the song song is called, please forgive my horrible German pronunciation, if for any if any German speakers manage to find this video, uh, Keine Schönheit ohne Gefahr. It means no beauty without danger. No beauty without danger. That is that is what you guys are experiencing right now. You want to sit on your plateau. You want to sit and enjoy the beautiful garden you've created for yourself. But I think deep down, you know that you can't actually just sit there and enjoy the beauty because it will stagnate. It will eventually stagnate. And you guys probably don't want to wait around until the stagnation sets in. You guys are pretty preemptive. So you're starting to feel like, okay, before I get bored, before everything kind of peters out and starts to wilt and goes to shit, you know you have to bring in a little bit of an edge. Maybe you guys are secretly a little bit of adrenaline junkies. Do you keep do you keep going through these cycles of regeneration just to keep yourself entertained? That's not necessarily bad. I don't I don't see that as a bad thing right now, but that's just the type of energy that is coming through. And I think the next phase for you guys is to have I mean, it's right here. Seven of Worlds breakthrough breakthrough look at this horse just blasting out all of this fiery energy breakthrough you guys are busting out because and it is coming up with the priestess this would be the high priestess so and i mean we also have two of worlds reflection i kind of brought those cards up in the opposite order so let's take them out this way first you're going through this reflective period where I think you're realizing you don't want to sit on your plateau forever. You're ready to, to re-up this. You're ready to keep regenerating because you understand that regenerate, regeneration is how things remain fresh and in flow and in constant creation. You guys don't want to just sit on your laurels and just turn in, you know, you don't want your garden to turn into a swamp. You don't want to go all boggy. You guys got to stay fresh and in movement. And that is what you're experiencing in this period of reflection. Um, while you're sitting in your equanimity. So even if things are, are good right now, you guys are getting ready for the next level. And it is about, for you guys, I think it's taking, you've probably been a little bit focused on the material, not in a bad way. You've been developing your knowledge of the material world, your knowledge of earth. That's why you came to earth. That's why you're here. So being materialistic is almost never a bad thing, right? Being earthy is never, never a bad thing. But you guys are focused on building your lives in, in your, in your embodiments, getting, getting good with your relationship with the earth. And you're ready to bust this out. Um, yeah, the, the priestess coming up with this seven of worlds breakthrough, that is a spiritual breakthrough. That is, spiritual power coming in from beyond the veil from higher dimensions sorry guys i keep having to pause the camera because there's a weed whacker guy that keeps going by and every time i think he's done it starts back up again and i'm not sure if it's being picked up by the camera or not but that is a little bit representative of your energy for me there is something just beyond just beyond your perception, but it is coming into your perception and it's kind of coming in and coming out. It is distracting you. It, you're sitting in your garden and you're starting to perceive something just outside of your garden, something that maybe you never paid attention to before, but there's definitely com something coming in 
And it is this energy. It is this feminine, dark, magical, mystical power that is going to be coming in to help you bust out of the matrix, to bust out of your current paradigm, to bust out of your garden, whatever metaphor you want, want to run with. But you guys are, you have a spiritual awakening coming. And a lot of you have probably already had spiritual awakenings, <laughs> but there's another one on the horizon. It is, and it is probably going to take you way out of your comfort zone. If you feel like you have had a certain level of maybe expertise or at least comfort and familiarity with your perception of the universe, there's a whole nother layer that is going to present itself to you and it is probably going to blow your mind. So something beyond your current level of understanding is coming in, something you've never considered before. Okay, I'm back again. I'm so sorry about uh, all the noise if the microphone is picking that up. And I'm sorry about all the interruptions, but that's, I actually feel how you guys are, you're moving into this moment where you're going to feel disrupted. Your life is going to be disrupted. It's like that idea in, you know, business and technology where a business or, you know, a field goes along, yada, 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 like it's been going on for years or decades even. And then there's a disruptor that comes in and <laughs> completely changes the ball game and forces everybody to adapt. Something is going to come in to disrupt you. But don't worry about, you know, how's that going to unfold for you? This is, you guys totally got this. You have your strong foundation. You have already done a lot of inner work. You guys are already quite advanced. It's not like you're going from your ho-hum little kind of ordinary selves into having your very first spiritual awakening. I feel like you guys have already traveled pretty far down your path and it's just that there is a going to be a quick uh, disruption that propels you forward in a way that is going to be really fun and enjoyable once you get over the initial bump in the road. Okay, I'd like to pull one secret language of light oracle for you guys. And that one flipped right over. Healing. Wow, can you see way down here? Let's see. This is the figure of a human and there is the world. There's a planet right in their heart. And look at the rest of this card. We have these our angel wings coming in. This light bursting out of someone's heart. And that card is going to go right down, right in the center of this spread. This transition, this regeneration, this disruption, this leveling up, this spiritual awakening you guys are going through uh, is all happening because it, it is has been enabled by the heart healing you guys have done. And some of this heart healing has probably been done really recently. May, if you're watching this, in May 2020, May, one of the major themes for the collective right now is heart healing. If you're watching this at a later date, same thing for you, just at a different on a different timeline. That's totally fine. Um, it's like you had to go. The reason you didn't have this breakthrough before is because you had to go through this heart healing. And now that that has been healed, I mean, maybe you have a little bit of residual healing to do over the next period of time. But that is what you have been doing while you were sitting on your plateau in your equanimity and reflecting you were going through this heart healing and now that you have done that you can oh you're opened up to a whole new level of perception and you will be able to heal from your did I, what did i just say did i say you'll be able to heal from your heart space i meant to say that you will be able to feel from your heart space you'll be able to perceive from your heart space you'll be able to sit in your heart and use your heart to navigate your path forward through these disruptions and into this um, feminine paradigm spiritual breakthrough. But for some of you, you're going to be learning how to be a healer yourself. Yeah, some of you are going to be feeling the call, so to speak, and healing doesn't have to be like you don't have to go off and become a Reiki practitioner or 
do you learn some kind of specific healing modality or become a nurse or a doctor or anything like that, we can heal a lot of in a lot of ways that we don't notice, you know, as a teacher, as a, as a cook, as a homemaker, as a bus driver, there is a lot of things we can do. Uh, and we just don't know, but we are energetically healing others, whether we know it or not. So that is something to think about as you go through this breakthrough, as you bust through these ceilings, um, how you are healing yourself and how you are healing others. And I think that's the end of your guys' reading. Thank you so much for tuning in. Hope to see you again soon. Bye. Hey, pal three, welcome to your reading. I feel like you guys are going through a little bit of a tough time here. These energies are a little bit dense, a little bit, a little bit like a Saturn return or other some, some other kind of Saturn transit. I feel like the walls are closing in around you guys. Not that they literally are, but that's how you feel. That is your perception of what is happening to you. Um, you know, we all go through those periods where we feel like we're being forced into situations we don't like. And we feel like the universe is just coming down with the great cosmic thumb to snuff us into the dirt. Um, you know, we've all, we all, if we have... Most of us have been there. Most of us have been through that. And those of us that haven't will at some point. So we all go through these moments and they're just, they're a point on the wheel. This deck, actually the Wildwood Tarot, uh, the, the guidebook is actually really interesting because it puts all of these cards on the wheel of the year, the Celtic wheel of the year. Other cultures have other similar like medicine wheels and stuff like that. But this deck uses the Celtic idea of the wheel of the year which is like the wheel of fortune and how everything is part of a cycle there, you know, in the North, in, uh, the area of the world where Celtic cultures are and were there, obviously four seasons, you know, everything has its time of darkness. Everything has to go through the winter and the wheel couldn't function if it weren't a complete, a complete wheel, a complete cycle. So you guys are going through, you know, winter, you're going through the winter time, <laughs> you know, it's, it's almost like you guys are coming up to the winter, the winter solstice on, on an energetic level. Um, so where are you at right now? You've got the wanderer, the wanderer, which is the fool. This is a guy stepping out onto his path into the forest. I have no idea how dark and dangerous that forest can become, but right now the sun is shining. There's a rainbow on his feet and he's off on his journey. So you guys stepped out onto some kind of journey and you, you have the ace of arrows and the king of arrows. You guys, I think have, it's interesting. I think you came with a certain clarity of vision and, a certain amount of knowledge, but with all of this, these arrows, these are swords. So lots of air energy, lots of mind energy. Maybe you guys have been living mostly in your mind as intellectuals or just somebody who is really rational, really left-brained. Um, and I, I've been through paradigms like that where all of my energy was up in my mind and just so much air energy where that is really beneficial if you're going through a paradigm where you need to, you know, train and develop your mind. And of course we need rationality and we need logic and we lead, we need our left brain. That is one of the gifts of the human body to develop our rational brains, <laughs> to develop our brains so that they can support our minds. Right. But that can get really kind of disconnected. We can feel completely disconnected from our human embodiments, from ourselves, we're out of our, we get out of our bodies, we get out of our emotional bodies, we get out of the experience of really living our lives. So I feel like this mental paradigm you guys were in uh, is you guys are ready for something new because of the fool, the wanderer here. You are ready to experiment and wander and kind of get back into the meat of things, into the meaty business of being alive. I almost feel like you guys could have been like academics you know, maybe if you weren't a working academic, maybe you were just a student in university and for the last few years or however long it's been, you have been really, you know, in your minds, in, in your books, in your ideas. And it's kind of that thing of um, 
briefcase to backpack, you know, when people leave their careers behind and go backpacking, that kind of thing. You guys are ready to let, like, let that all go, but I don't feel like you're entirely into it. Maybe, maybe this has been forced on you a little bit because we have this card in the middle of the fates. So this is definitely a fated journey. This is part of your destiny, but you know, we like destiny, but we don't like fate, <laughs> right? There is an element of fate where we feel like the universe has been conspiring to make us do this. For example, maybe you worked as an academic for years and you loved it and you had no real intention to ever leave that paradigm, but then a series of catastrophes or one major catastrophe have led you to having to leave your career or to having to leave a personal thought paradigm. Maybe you guys thought a specific way and then you came face to face with some kind of horrible truth. Not that the truth was horrible in and of itself, but horrible to you because it was entirely unexpected and it completely upended your way of being. This could even be a relationship if you found out that somebody had deeply betrayed you or been keeping something secret. Something I feel like something has come to light, a piece of information, something to do with air energy, a piece of information, uh, some facts, some data, or just events that came in and blew away the smoke and mirrors, blew away the curtains. And now you've been fated to walk a new path. You've been fated. You've been pushed out the door as the wanderer. And now you're walking down this path and you're probably going, what the hell is happening? So that's kind of where you're at now <laughs> and where you're going. Um, yeah, it's, it's going to be a little bit difficult, at least for a while, guys. I'm, I hate to tell you, but <laughs> the hooded man, this is the hermit. So you guys are going deep, deep within, looking into your own inner light. And I like that this is, in comparison to all of this, these arrows, this air energy we have over here, you guys are starting to get tuning into your, your soul frequency, tuning into your heart. The, the hooded man, he, this lantern, for me, really represents his heart space, his heart chakra, his, his, his own inner light. And that is also just his authenticity, his integrity, his own inner self, and it's taking it, you know, he has a hood over his, his head. He's not, he's not, I don't feel like the hooded man is up in his head, but he is deep in his own, his own self. So, you know, running with this metaphor of the academic, if you've been looking for all the answers in books and you've been trying to find the facts and the data and saying, I can't believe anything until I see the data, I can't believe anything, you know, until all of these peer reviewed studies have been performed and everything has been checked. Um, yeah, that has maybe been a little fatiguing for you. And, or maybe you're starting to realize that there are other ways to be convinced of something. You, there are other ways you can tune into your intuition. You can tune into your heart and you can tune into your own experiences. I feel the next phase of your life is going to be very experiential because you've been up in your head having your mind-driven, fact-driven, data-driven experience. Now you're coming down into your body and you're going to be having an experiential, <laughs> an experiential experience of following your heart, following your intuition and seeing where that takes you on your faded journey through the forest. This queen of hairs or <laughs> queen of bows represented here by a hair. Maybe this is an aspect of yourself. It could be an aspect of yourself that where, uh, you know, your own inner intuition is coming out. Your long buried, your long buried emotional side could be coming out. For some of you, it's that. For other people, this is a companion. This is somebody supporting you. This is a loving figure coming to support you. Either in a body, you know, a friend, a family member, a lover even. Um, for others, this is just your, your guides. Some of you may have never even tuned into your spiritual guides at all. And I totally get that. That was me. I, I was an atheist, guys. So I completely get like this reading could have been for myself uh, a year ago. <laughs> you know, I, I was a total left brain mind driven atheist and a skeptic. And then I had to move in through this hooded man 
uh, internal looking for my inner light and understanding that I can understand the universe through my own experiences, not just through the experience of the perceptions of my mind. So I get, I get this journey and some of you will be receiving little hints, little signs, little synchronicities from your guides. Uh, I just use the, the word guides because that is a catch-all term. It could be whoever they are to you. It could be disembodied spirits, passed on loved ones, your guardian angels, uh, the alien, your star family, your aliens, um, higher dimensional beings, gods, goddesses, nature spirits, whatever. I don't care uh, what names or perceptions you want to attach to them, but this could also be, yeah, basically an energy that is disembodied that is coming in to communicate with you and to remind you that they've always been with you and they're going to be helping you guide guide your way as you tune into your inner light and because of course we have eight of arrows struggle so this is definitely going to be a struggle for you guys i i am sorry to have to say but look we have the recurring theme of the lantern the lantern here you are lighting your own inner light and that is the purpose of this whole journey everything that has happened to you all of these faded events this is all conspiring well it's not conspiring it is all happening for you to make you look within and find your inner lamp your inner lamp light to remember that you have a soul, to remember that you don't need anything other than your own authenticity, your own energy, your own inner light. Guys, that is the purpose of all of this. So that is the journey you're going to be going through. You're going to be journeying inward. I feel like this wanderer guy, this fool, he's not so much, not so much journeying out into the darkness. It's He's journeying into the darkness within himself so that he can find his own light. So your journey is going to be very internal, very personal, very idiosyncratic, and it is a little bit like the dark night of the soul. Maybe for some of you, it is your dark night of the soul, but I think we can have many dark nights. Some dark nights are smaller and less dark, and some dark nights are longer and darker, but there's something here of, yeah, being forced to look into your inner darkness, but that is all in service of finding your inner light. And let's pull you guys some Oracle cards. First, let's do Black Moon Astrology cards. If I can shuffle. I have very small hands and these are very big cards. I have to shuffle them like vertically and it's not ideal. <laughs> lunar eclipse change okay so we have the moon here which represents your own emotional body and what is happening here it is a lunar eclipse holy crap guys this is this is so much so much like this you might feel like you are being eclipsed like your emotions are going through a reset almost or like something really intense about your personal energy is going through a reset and just like i was saying having to go through a dark night, you're going to go through a moonless night. Once the moon is eclipsed, the moon disappears from the sky, right? You can't see it, or you can just see a barely a ring around it, right? Think about the last time you saw a lunar eclipse. That is entirely symbolizing your current state of affairs, what you're going to be going through. There is going to be a moment where you are eclipsed, where you feel like you are eclipsed, almost like your light has gone out, has gone out, but just remember guys that nothing can extinguish your light it can only be covered up it can be like a lamp where like the lampshade has been put over it you're the light never goes out the light never goes out so and remember that as the light is extinguished it is all in service of this evolution you're going through this change you're going through lunar eclipse says right down here change and if you're watching this in Spr uh, spring of 2020 we have some eclipses coming up two lunar lunar eclipses and a solar eclipse 
I would not be surprised at all if those are major events for you. Pay attention to them. Pay attention about how you're thinking and feeling on those days and what shifts for you after the eclipses because that is the they the eclipses help us work through these energetic shifts they're like catalysts and a lot of people will see, be seeing things shift inside themselves and around themselves through eclipse season once you guys get to the other side of the eclipses you're going to be feeling a lot better i think things whatever needs to shift will shift for you during eclipse season so by the time we get into july of 2020 for those of you watching it now uh you're going to be feeling much better and you'll be through this fate cycle divine feminine look at that heart shining away that heart of light your inner light coming in and i knew that this queen of bows was a companion for a lot of you that is this is this queen is the divine feminine coming in to remind you that you are protected there is light around you there are beings who got your back you have so much energetic support out there you you might not be able to see them you might not be able to sense them you might not even be convinced that they are there but <laughs> here is your mess reminder that they are there they got your back they led you to this reading to give you this reminder and you don't need to believe me right now but as the months pass and as these eclipses go by and as we move on into summer and even into 2021 you are going to be able to look back on this as the time where you went through your darkness and found your inner light and once your inner light it's not that it needs to be ignited it's not even that it needs to be uncovered it's that you just need to remember that it's there you need to remember that your inner light is there and you need to have an experience of it you need to experience your inner light you need to go through that dark night that eclipse moment so that you can change and that you can be opened up to your own soul frequency your own soul frequency of light and I think that's what I'm getting for you guys. That's the end of your messages. Thank you so much for tuning in. Good luck on your journey. Just remember that this too shall pass and that you're going to come out the other side just surrounded by love and light. Hope to see you guys again soon. Bye. Hey, Pal4, welcome to your reading. I feel like you guys just put two things together and now you're nervous about it. <laughs> um... How do I explain? You got this. You got this two of wands or two of cups sitting right with the four of pentacles, which reminds me so, so much of when I got married. You know, two of cups, that's the soulmate. That's the divine union, two people coming together, entwining their energies. And, you know, so I got married, but then it was immediately followed by this horrible four of pentacles. For us, that was because of, you know, my husband and I are from different countries. So in order to get married, I had to immigrate and then we had to move. I had to move from Canada to the U.S. And then the state that he lived in, we had to move across the state and start all over. And he had to start his business all over. And I wasn't allowed to work because I was going through immigration and yada, yada, yada. So getting married was the fact that we had to start these new lives together, put like a massive strain on our finances. So it despite the fact that we got to be together it put us immediately into this four of pentacles scrooge lack mentality um and really having to save our shekels which was not obviously an ideal way to start our marriage so <laughs> that that is just so strongly what these two cards remind me of and also with the the page of wands that new spark that new passion that new way of being that manifesting something so this isn't obviously a relationship for everybody, but something that you really wanted to experience or accomplish or create, you did. You've done it. Two of cups. You brought those two things together. You got what you wanted. You are having this. It's a destiny. It is soulmate energy. It is everything working out just how you wanted to. But then four of pentacles. The four of pentacles isn't always that bad, but it is... It is definitely a 
stagnant energy. It, it is, you got to think, even if somebody has millions of dollars in the bank, what is the, what is it doing in the bank? It is just stagnating, right? Somebody's just holding on to something because they're afraid of not having enough. So it, this is a weird energy to, to see next to each other. That is why I, yeah, going back to that metaphor of I got married and then we were broke. It, it's that kind of thing. So why is this happening to you? What What is going on and what is the lesson here? In the middle of everything, you got yin. This is the, the black half of the yin yang, the feminine half, the mysterious half, the watery half, the emotional half. The half that is in flow and invites you to look out into the void and see the infinite potential in all things. So I think you guys, with that yin card coming up, that is so much saying, okay, you just need to trust the flow. You need to trust the love. Trust that everything is going according to plan and that you don't need to hoard all of your money. <laughs> you don't need to hoard your security. I feel like you guys, you just stepped off into some kind of new, new adventure, new project or new relationship. And you're just, you're just a little bit nervous about it. You're just a little bit uneasy. It's like, but don't be uneasy about it. Don't be scared about it. Because if you made that decision in your authenticity, in your integrity and from, from your heart, then you did make the right decision. I feel like you're just kind of second guessing yourself or you're going, oh, there's some unintended consequences here. You know, maybe you moved across to a new country, to a new, the other half of the, the other side of the planet. And you're going, ah, this is kind of a little bit more scary than I thought it would be. And, you know, now my security is threatened because I live in India or something like that, right? Well, don't let those fear, those scarcity, those lack mentalities, don't let them get you. Don't let them get you because two of cups and page of wands, you are so on the right track. You so got this. You so got this. The yin is coming up as that extra reminder that you you are you are in the divine flow. You're in your cosmic flow. This is all happening according to plan. But the thing with yin is that it is the unknown. It is the black half of the yin yang. It it there isn't there isn't a lot of mental clarity in terms of yin. So you have to feel for clarity. Feel for clarity. So yeah, you need to get over this four of pentacles. Don't be this guy sitting there trying to hold on to all of his money just and this isn't a very serious problem i don't think i feel like this is really a momentary thing you know maybe you just checked your bank account and realized that you guys spent more money than you should have on your honeymoon and now you're a little nervous about it so this isn't this isn't like a serious problem i know i'm a little maybe harping on it a little bit but i don't really mean to that's just because i get really enthusiastic when i when I do readings and I just, I get really into everybody's energy and I get, I get excited and I really talk about it a lot and cause I'm really chatty, but <laughs> so I don't really, I don't really see this as a big deal, a big problem. It is a momentary blip of energy for you to work through. So you want to be focusing on your two of cups and your page of wands. Do not be focusing on your, you know, on how many rolls of toilet paper you have or how much money you have in the bank because you have your energy in your your love and your passion is all there and your feminine flow is all there and that is what is important going forward because yep going forward it is so much so much flow you guys have landed this is the star this is the star that has landed after the tower coming in for healing coming in for water coming in to start fresh and start anew Yes, it doesn't matter about those four pentacles. That's that's all. Who cares about that? You are the you are the fallen star. Wherever you landed, you landed exactly where you need to be, and you have all the resources around you that you need in order to heal any wounds that you had from your past journey. And you have exactly what you need in order to build a new life. Because look, the fool, the fool, and the star, guys. If you're gonna get two major arcana right next to each other, this is such a fresh start. It is a fresh start coming after the storm you are feeling like so fresh and so clean <laughs> you know this person is naked this person is naked and they are mixing the waters so that they can start anew as the fool and you are not alone in this at all six of cups more pa this is more water energy more passing the love around passing the love around and going from the two of cups to the six of cups this is if it was just two of you, 
if this was a relationship for you guys and it was just you and your partner, if you guys want to start a family, this is this is a big indication that that is a, absolutely a possibility for you in your near future. And if you're totally not interested in starting a family as in kids, um, you know, however else your extended community, however you want that to come in for you, this is a good indication for that. If you just want a dog, yes, and the fool has a dog, right? If you want pets, if you want to be able to connect with a larger community, you know, either in the workplace or just as like an artistic project or doing some kind of community service, also good. Also just for meeting your soul family, meeting your soul family, sometimes you meet them online, sometimes you pass them in the street. People that you just really click and resonate with, they can be coming in for you and they can also be coming for in for you etherically. But this is just six of cups. This is surrounded by love, love being passed around, love and love is being shared. So you guys have so many, so many good cards. The it the only thing here is this blip about the four of pentacles. So yeah, even if you are a little short on money for the little for the foreseeable future, it is not a big deal. It is not a big deal because you are surrounded by this by this love, by this flow, by this heart energy, by these cups, just everything else in your life is so good that you don't need to be worrying about your financial situation. And if the, it's not necessarily money, right? It could be you know, maybe your housing situation is not ideal or you're living in some kind of temporary place or whatever whatever it is for you in your physical reality that is unstable and is making you feel nervous it's it's fine just just you know deal with that on a practical level as you need to but focus focus your energy on what you do have on all the love around you on your fresh start and on the community building you guys can do yeah your that four of pentacles is not not a big problem and you'll be able to move past that so Okay, for you guys, I feel like drawing some of these Moonology cards. Nothing will come of this situation. That goes right on top of the Four of Pentacles, and that is confirmation of, of what I was just saying. Those money problems, those physical security problems, they're not a problem. It's fine. It's fine, guys. <laughs> nothing will come of that problem. You know, the nothing will come of the situation card is good if you're looking at something that's kind of sludgy or negative or a little bit nervous. It's just, it means it's fine. That's going to pass. Adjustments are required. That is what you guys are. It's an adjustment in your mentality. Learning to focus on all of this love and beauty that you're surrounded by and not focusing on those four of pentacles. Yeah, that is probably your big, your biggest lesson here. And it's funny how I keep saying that this four of pentacles is not important, but look how much I've talked about it. I've talked about it more than almost any other energy here. All this beautiful energy and it's just this four of pentacles, which isn't even that bad of a card. So I feel like you guys are really fixating on something that is not that important, but it is like burrowing into your mind. And you don't need to beat yourself up about that because there's an energetic basis to that, right? You Maybe you've really struggled in life and uh, had a lot to be anxious about before. And now that everything is good and you just have this one little thing to be anxious about, your your brain, like on a chemical level and on the level of the structures in your brains, the connections in your brain, you are out of force of habit fixating on the small problem. So it is a matter of creating new habits, reprogramming your your neurotransmitters and creating new neural pathways in your mind so that you can focus on all the love and joy and beauty in your life and not worry about that one stupid problem that isn't really a problem. It is just an irritation. Give the irritation the attention it deserves, which is, you know, if you have an itch, scratch it. If you have a problem, well, fix it, but don't fix eight on it. Just fix the problem without giving it any more of your energy than is absolutely necessary. And if you can't fix it right now, we'll just live with it. It's fine. It's kind of like having a wart on your foot. <laughs> Sorry if that's a little gross, but you know, if you have a wart on your foot, well, you want to get rid of it. You go to the doctor, you do your over-the-counter treatments, you do whatever you need to do to get rid of the wart. But when you're not actually dealing with the wart, you just kind of ignore it and forget about it because who cares? It's just a wart. Sure, it's gross and nasty and you want to get rid of it, but eh, you know, 
if it's not like you have cancer, so, you know, you just deal with it and then forget about it when you're not actually trying to fix the problem. Show the world the real you, full moon in Aquarius. So much, so much goes with the star. You're being asked to shine bright. Maybe these, uh, this fixating problem, this thing you've been doing fixating, you've been stuck in an anxious loop. And because of that, you haven't been able to show people who you really are because you've just been anxious. You've, you guys have just been anxious for no real reason. And I get that. I get that. That's been me for a lot of a lot of my life. And that's okay because you have all of the potential here to bust out of that. The star, the fool, the six of cups, yin, page of wands, two of cups. So much potential to start over. So much potential to start your life and to live it as you have always wished. Show the world the real you. Be the star that you are. The star that has just fallen from the sky. The star that can have a completely brand new fresh start surrounded by love. Show the world the real you guys. I think that is the end of your message. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope to see you guys again soon. Bye.